me being wrong on the internet. So anyway, here we go. Correction. It doesn't matter that technical manuals, books, pipe gauging websites, explanatory websites, and training websites tell you that steel or other kind of pipe sizes are based on the inner diameter. It isn't. It's based on the outer diameter, and it doesn't mention the outer diameter. One inch standard pipe doesn't have any dimension in it that's one inch based. There's a surprising reason this is actually used, but then when you hear about it, it makes absolute perfect sense, because it does. So here we go. But we're going to talk about something completely different first. In the USA, the most popular sizes are 12, 20, 28, then 0 0.41, 410, and then 10 and 16 gauge for shotguns. A long time ago, somebody somewhere determined that in a particular gun they had with a particular amount of shot, one and one eighth ounces of shot in a certain 12 gauge shotgun load of a specific pellet size, <laughs> propelled by three drams or 82 grains of black powder, had a muzzle velocity of 1200 feet per second. So that became the standard of using grain equivalent to mean apples to apples comparison for speed. Now they just print the velocity on the side of the box, but you're going to have to... And then they tell you, don't use it, because now we use smokeless powder instead of gunpowder. But we use, well, Shell's listing the powder load in terms of drams of black powder is an imprecise way of describing the velocity of that particular shell only. It's equivalence. Instead of just putting down the velocity. And the velocity changes depending on how long the barrel is and how much constriction it is, whether or not it has a forcing cone, whether it groups correctly. Longer shells don't group as well as short ones. And here we go. Later, smokeless powder it was considerably more powerful than black powder, so dram equivalent meant that the dram number wasn't really the dram number anymore. <clears throat> but they were listed for specific smokeless powders. What the fuck's a dram? It's 1 16th of an ounce. The 16 ounces in a pound, so that's 256 drams per pound. There are 600 grains in a pound, so 27.34 grains per dram. But is it dram or dram equivalent based on you measuring dram equivalent for smokeless powder? <laughs> you know, <coughs> I'm starting to really understand why metric has taken over. So here we go. To determine the size of birdshot, I didn't know this, so I'm going to throw this together. This video, by the way, is called Stupid Standards for Stupid Gun Making Activities or something. I'll come up with a funny name. But it's Stupid Standards Day. To determine the size of birdshot, you subtract the shot size from the number 0.17. So 7.5 birdshot equals 0.95 diameter because 7.5 really refers to 0.75. At 7.5 birdshot would be almost the equivalent to a caliber rating at that point. But it's not because it actually works out to 0.95. So This had some reason to exist. You two, uh, 7.5 birdshot or 7.5 birdshot is really 0.75. So 0.17 minus 0.75 equals 0.95, which gives you the diameter. And again, this was done based on shot size and uh, shot towers dropping it from the air and having it form itself into spheres and landing in water. And <sighs> Suddenly that whole thing of 12 gauges firing a maximum 1 12th of a pound ball suddenly makes a shit ton much more sense. Shot patterns are traditionally measured, God help us all, just shoot me now, shooting at the center of 30 feet inch circle at 40 yards and counting the number of pellets that hit inside the circle. So shot patterns are measured by how they pattern in a space. And it's not 32 inches or 36 inches, or it's 30 at 40 yards. Because that was the standard size target that was available. So 
So let's see if we can scrub some more standards. Pipes. <clears throat> I'm going to read you examples. Getting to the point. But remember, let's, let's remember. In order of popularity and also in order of availability. I was trying to look up pistol rounds, but all I found were shotguns. Because there's fewer of them. Only just a little fewer. Out of the six most popular for specific purposes. 12 gauges are more popular than 20 gauge. 20 is more popular than 28. Then it's 410 shotgun, which is just a little bit under 50 caliber. Obviously. Then 10 gauge and then 16 gauge by popularity and therefore also by availability. However, I found a company that put out 50 caliber shotgun shells that's called 37 caliber or 37 gauge. I'm just, let's just move on. <clears throat> so, pipe sizes. For those of you out there who are wondering about this channel's purpose and why the hell I make these videos, <coughs> the whole point of this is if somebody wants to do something that is incredibly stupid, they're also doing the same thing that a person would do if they were intelligent, if they were allowed to have information. And this is not a violation of ITAR regulations in the United States to discuss something that was invented in the 18 fucking hundreds. But, safety warning. Part of the reason I'm making this video and all the others on this channel is to encourage people who want to learn about material science and also are interested in ballistics or making just toy guns or, or making a real potato cannon. What are the standards for these things? A quick tutorial. Specific grades of steel or even other metals have certain PSI ratings or they're nominal PSI ratings because nobody wants to use a standard. That actually is a PSI rating, but they don't talk about it that way. And it certainly isn't the same as making a, a barrel for a cannon or even a pistol. But we have to start somewhere, so we start at physical diameters. A Schedule 40 pipe 1 inch size, pipe 1, is actually <clears throat> has an outside diameter of 1.315 inch. How does the defined nominal pops pipe size only set the pipe si outside diameter when it isn't related to it? Because that's a one inch pipe, but it's actually 1.315. And its internal diameter is set by the wall thickness, and this is caused by its schedule number. The higher the schedule number, the skinnier the inside. So none of the dimensions have to match up with one inch and almost never do. Now, what is the one thing about a pipe that absolutely, if you were using it for all the purposes, including joining it together for making scaffolding or making water pipe or steam pipe, what is the one dimension you need to keep stable and why? The outside diameter. I'll explain why. A two inch nominal pipe, only criterion, is that it actually can't be two inches on the outside. It has to be 2.375 inches or 61.3 millimeters outside diameter. Dimensionless specifications only indirectly relate to the diameter and are that they're called dimensionless because the numbering for it is the, well, the type. Now, I'm going to bring up a really simple example of this. <clears throat> to find the actual dimensions, you have to look them up. But the outside diameter is the only thing that's mostly consistent. And again, companies can make ones that are different. But why? Why would they have the wrong diameter? On a thinner pipe, they have to make the outer diameter a different dimension because of what this is really based on. Just like a 2x4 isn't really 2 inches by 4 inches, this is literally a nut and bolt standard. And that gives you the idea of where this came from. It's for threading the pipe. It was never for the dimensions of the pipe itself. It's for the junctions that are used. It's based on the idea that if you have a 1 inch pipe, you have to have enough material to uh, tap and die on the outside of the pipe so that you can put on a one inch standard coupler. That's it. That's so the inside diameter of the pipe, which is the most important part of the pipe's usage for most purposes, doesn't change per schedule. I mean, you could change it from one schedule to another, but this would cause the least amount of trouble. If you're moving something through it, you don't want it to bottleneck inside. So you use a coupling on the outside that makes it a little bit bigger there, and then it goes back to the other di diameter. Now, to be very blunt about this, what this really truly means is that one of the thread dimensions when you thread the outside of a uh, one inch pipe, de declared one inch pipe, 
at 1.315 inches. Hmm, I wonder if you thread it by put, cutting threads in to where the, the depth of the thread is one inch standard. Uh, you, this is a 1.3 inch, so divide 0.3, so it's 0.15 inch depth on the threads. That sounds about right. This may actually be what it is because you'd start off with couplers that were one inch diameter inside and you'd thread them out. And then the pipe you'd thread down to the one inch. So it's based on the coupler that's used with the pipes. And obviously if you make the pipes too thin or whatever, you're going to have to change the outer diameter to give them something to bite into when you put them together with threads. Now the thing is, <coughs> this is me deriving this, mostly because of the nut and bolt standard because I do know that that actually has a, uh, that's actually partially where that came from. Bolt standards are based on the outside diameter of the bolt because you have to drill the hole. Two of the three things have to be the that standard. The maximum diameter of your bolt with threads has to match the hole you're drilling to put the bolt through. The nut, it doesn't matter how thick it is, nor does the head on the bolt. So yeah, if you get a one inch diameter bolt and try to thread it with a one inch pipe coupler, it might actually work if the thread pitch is the same. Again, that's another entire separate video. So it was based on threading standards, most likely at one time or another. And just like the bore size for a shotgun being based on how heavy the lead is, and it doesn't make any sense, the standard's completely wonky. A shotgun shell goes from 0.81 inches to 0.8 inches, firing a projectile that can vary from 0.69 to 0.73 inches. Because it's firing lead BBs, it's not really supposed to be a precise standard anyway. It's supposed to be firing shotgun shot. It's a shotgun. Now, why am I bringing this up? <clears throat> because the only thing that seems to match in these things is having to look them up and trudge through the paperwork, I'm going to save you some trouble. Three-quarter inch Schedule 80 pipe is usable only because it's slightly smaller than what you need to put a shotgun shell in. And the one-inch pipe diameter, Schedule 30, will fit over it. Schedule 40 does not. And here's the information. <clears throat> You have to look them up. NPS 14 pipe is actually 14 inches because the material's thick enough they didn't care. But anyway, 1.05 inch or 26.67 millimeter outside diameter, three quarter inch pipe, NPS number 20, excuse, NPS, excuse me, one three quarter inch pipe or number 20 in DN, dimensionless, schedule 40 standard causes a one point excuse me, a 0.113 inch or 2.87 millimeter wall thickness. And that is 0.824 inches or 20.91 millimeter inner diameter. A little loose for a 0.81, a god damn it, a 0.81 diameter shotgun shell base, the base, not the rim, which is, and this is the number you use for the drill for reboring, 13 sixteenths inch drill bit. Just use it. There's an equivalent in millimeters. It'll work too. Go large instead of small. If you get a smaller pipe, that would be a. <clears throat> now the next thing is a Schedule 30 pipe has a 0.114 or 2.896 wall thickness for one inch Schedule 30 pipe, and it will fit over it. If you want to make <clears throat> Uh, a tighter fit to bore out. We'll talk about that. This other one is a 1.315 outer diameter for one inch pipe. That's 0.228 equals 1.0 yada yada yada. It's a loose fit over uh, that pipe <clears throat> for schedule 40. Schedule 80 and excess would require a reboring to get it down to 0.81 inner diameter. A Schedule 40 1-inch pipe's 0.133 wall thickness would require a reboring to get it to the 1.05 outer inner diameter that needs to go over the other pipe. Now, this is all going to be much more clearly done below. A taper of 3 16 inch drill bit down to a 51 64 inch tip over 3.5 inches is not needed to make the chamber. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Bye-bye.